This video is brought to you by YT Andrew Paul Tech Repairs. If you have a console, laptop, computer or Macbook in need of repair in the UK or the EU then have a look in the description below this video for details on how to contact us in order to organise your repair. Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome to today's video. I just wanted to take a quick moment out before we start this one today. Uh, I just wanted to obviously wish everybody good health out there at the moment, what with the COVID-19 crisis and the world's not a great place at the moment. So hopefully uh, you're all well and you're keeping safe. I'm okay. Um, I've got a lot of stuff on with work and things at the moment and family, so editing these things is really, really difficult. Uh, I just wanted, like I say, to take a quick moment out just to hope everybody's okay out there and to keep your chins up. Not only that, but uh, we've hit a milestone over the weekend of 25,000 subscribers, which is amazing. So I want to say thank you to everybody out there who has subscribed to the channel and continues to do so. And anybody who hasn't yet, but uh, is thinking about it, then please do. Um, when I started this channel, I think it's about five years ago now, uh, I honestly thought if I get a couple of hundred subscribers, I'll be really happy. So to sit here with 25k is sort of beyond my wildest expectations so just wanted to take uh, a quick moment just to thank everybody out there for that and like i said just to hope that everybody's keeping well um at some point in this video by the way um i, th I think when i'm waiting for the os to reinstall in this machine after we fixed it to prove we've sort of the 4218-6 error i think i go ranting about cars and replacing suspensions on things that's this mini that i'm sat in right now and guess what it's still not finished. It's still buggered. Um, but we are getting there now. It is, um, it's nearly finished. But there's, there's all sorts wrong with this thing, I tell you. It's a good job it was cheap, is all I will say. But uh, anyway, no, thank you very much. Uh, like I say, I hope everybody keeps well. Stay safe out there. And uh, you, you fed up of listening to me prattling on. So let's get on with the video. Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome to today's video and today we're going to be going over this PS4 Pro it's an NVA 001 revision motherboard so it's one of the very very first PS4 Pros and this particular machine has been sent in because when the user tries to update it it throws a software update error SU42118-6 which of course is the dreaded um, not being able to communicate with the Renesas DVD drive, well, BD-ROM drive, or should I say. I keep, every time I do one of these videos, I keep calling the BD-ROM drive DVD drive. Anyway, um, yes, so that's what we're looking at today. So we've got a few of these videos on the channel. We've got um, some of these videos for the original uh, PS4. We have them for the PS4 Slim, I do believe. We also have one for the 1200s as well, if I remember rightly. This feed for 1200s, I think. Yeah, I'm fairly sure we do. So anyway, I'll put the uh, the links in the description to the relevant videos below. But yes, this is for the PS4 Pro, and today we're going to be using this NVA001 as an example. So if we do any other later revision ones at any point, and if they're any different, then obviously we'll cover them off in a, in a separate video. Um, but they're not going to be too dissimilar. Um, either way, they're going to be fairly similar no matter what board revision you've got in there, I should imagine. So... Without further ado, let's get to working out why we have no disk feed. Now then, if you watch the other videos, you'll notice that quite a lot of the time, the issue is down to mainboard fuses. And indeed, I have no doubt in my mind at all that this one is going to be similar. And in fact, it may even be the same bloody fuse. So why not? Let's just take a look. So what we're looking for is the area of the board which controls the BD-ROM drive. So that would be the easiest way to work it out would be to look for the Renesas SCEI chip and that is right over here so for example up here you have the hard disk drive connector yes you do you have the APU to the right of that so if we go back to the hard disk connector and we go down you'll see just here we have this Renesas SCEI R9J04 G011 FP1 yes this crappy little chip here which is the misery and the cause of so many dead PlayStations. Yes, with the drive mismatch error and everything else. Luckily, they saw their errors of the ways from the original design and decided to incorporate said Renesas IC onto the main board. But even then, 
they're not perfect. So anyway, this particular region of the board, after I've done digressing, is responsible for the BD-ROM drive output. And there's a few fuses we may want to check around here mainly the F6000 series fuses. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to take a look down here because if we go to the bottom of the board in the bottom left corner as we've got that Renaissance chip looking at us there we have two fuses. We have F6202 and F6201. Now for those of you who've been watching the PS4 Slim video will know this F6202 is a very very big culprit as to the cause of failure with this error message on the Slim. So is this one any better? Well, I can tell you now. F6201 below it. Let's just get a, <laughs> Let's zoom in on F6201, which is the one underneath. Because that looks like hell. That looks like he's got a hole in it. Let's uh, get this nicely zoomed in. And has it? Yes, it has. Look at that. Wow. Well. <laughs> you can see there, look. There's a little black hole in the middle of that fuse. Yep, that one's definitely burnt through. So let's just see what it reads on the multimeter. If it reads anything at all, I'll be amazed. Let's just uh, get the focus back in there for you. So basically, continuity mode on the multimeter. That's the mode where it beeps when you touch the two probes together. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put one probe on one side of that fuse and the other probe on the other. And it reads... Oh, well, open line. So... On some multimeters, that will be shown as a 1. Um, OL, open line, basically means infinite resistance. Basically means there is no connection between that point there and that point there. Which is a problem when it's a fuse, because you need continuity across it to allow the current to pass, which isn't happening. So this fuse is indeed blown open. It is indeed bad. So F6201 has gone to the great scrapyard in the sky. Let's check the one above it then, F6202, just for... Shits and giggles, because we know this one's bad on the other boards. Let's just see if this one is any better. F6202 is... Well, I'm not getting any reading out of that one either. OL open line. OL open line for F6202. Wow, okay, so we have two blown fuses on this board then. <laughs> That's slightly odd. Okay, that's... Um... Well, I weren't expecting that one. One fuse, yeah, two. Wow, okay, let's just go check some of these other ones then, because I don't know, obviously, the, I don't know the history of any of these machines, because um, they're basically, they're given to me by a guy who buys them all in bulk, I fix them, and then he sells them on. So, they returns and stuff he gets from God knows where else. So, I have 5,001's reading. Um, so they're not all bad. It's not as if it's had a... I'm just wondering if it's had like a a fairly big surge which has crapped half the board out. But no, it looks like it's just one of those things. So that's got my uh, attention there. I don't know what that is. <laughs> looks like bloody soil or something. Else. I don't know. Like I said, these, these boards are just... They're a mess. I mean, I don't know where he buys them from. I... I Honestly, don't. <laughs> but he does. He buys them from... Uh, I think they're supposed to be like catalogue returns. I've noticed one or two have like Eclipse um, references and things like that stuck to them. PC World, in fact, one of them. The guy's based in Liverpool. I don't know where he buys these from, I think. He gets them from an auction somewhere. But interestingly enough, one of them is from PC World in Bradford, which, of course, is where I'm from. So, yes, it's it's come full circle as one of them. Um, and, of course, we got that one working earlier today as well, so that's cool. Um, but this one, yes, so F6202 and F6201 on this particular board look absolutely toast. So let's get those replaced then, and let's see if that has any effect on our situation here. So if you have... If you have this particular issue and then definitely check those two fuses so what we will do i'll get some fume extraction on because we're going to need to do some soldering work here to replace these fuses i'm going to put some flux down on the motherboard just above the two fuses that's going to help the solder which is on the board just to flow nicely and then we can get these off hopefully in one piece now on the slim these fuses tend to um tend to weld themselves to the motherboard when they blow usually end up having to pick them off in component parts 
So uh, it'll be interesting to see if this one is any different. So we just get a hold of it with a pair of tweezers and slide it off. That one, which looked the worst of the two, to be honest, is um, it's come off without much of a fight, which is, you know, good to see. 6202 then, which is the one on the slims that tends to weld itself to the motherboard. Uh, oh, that's come off nicely as well. Oh, happy days. I'll sit there chiselling it off. Nice. Okay, so. Let's get some spares. Spare fuses. Now then, normally I do have a supply of these spare fuses. However, like I said, this guy has brought me a big batch of them and quite a few have had this failure, so I've actually run out of them. But not to worry, I have a donor board here with the same two fuses. So I'm just going to test these, make sure they're good. And if they're good, these can go back on. Yep, those fuses are good in the donor. Happy days. We like it when a plan comes together. We like it when a plan comes together. My nose is running in my throat. It's a bit scratchy today, so... Not sure if I aren't coming down with something, something, but uh, hopefully not. Got some work on my car to do this weekend. I'm going to have to replace the suspension on it. Oh yes, in each corner, four shock absorbers, black new brakes, disc pads, wear sensors. So the weather better hold up. Well I say it's my car, it's my second car, it's a Mini, Mini Cooper. Main cars are key a stinger these days. 3.3 GTS V6 Twin Turbo. Very nice car. The Mini I bought for shits and giggles for a laugh. Because it was an absolute dog. I love Minis. Always have. When I was growing up, I loved them. I thought they were, they were awesome things. Always wanted one. Did buy one. Bought an R56 Cooper S the day after I left university. The present to myself for graduation. Um, sold that eventually. And I've always wanted one of the original R50s as I like to drive in one. Loved them to bits, like I said, they're, they're quite sentimental to me. And this one, I saw it was down and out on its look. It's a real old pile of crap. I always used to enjoy fiddling with cars when I was younger. My first car and things like that, practically rebuilt half of it. <laughs> yeah, used to enjoy it. And I saw this one and I thought, do you know what? It was cheap. And I thought, I'll buy that. I'll, I'll do it up and I'll have a laugh with it. And, uh, so, yeah, second car. For now, anyway. Keep it, enjoy it for a little bit, and then see if we can't sell it on for the one. I'd love an R53S actually with a supercharger. <coughs> Always wanted one of those, just purely for the noise they make. Even they don't half scream their balls off, they're brilliant things. So that may have to be the uh, may have to be the next purchase, I think. All right, so those two fuses are replaced. Just cleaning the flux off. Happy days, everybody's happy there, I think. Everything's cool. Everything's tickety boo. Monkey do I? Okay, so what we're going to do? <coughs> Same again. So we're going to be. Continuity mode. Okay, one omen dropping across that fuse, so that's good. And less than one ohm and drop in across that fuse as well. So again, multimeter just in continuity mode. One probe on each side of the fuse. Listen for the beep. Hopefully you'll get one. If you do, the fuse is good. 
And yep, yeah, so that's that's cool. So those two fuses are replaced. F6201, F6202. So what we'll do now, we'll put this board back in the uh, in the machine, fire it up, we'll give it a test, and we'll see if we have any more F6 F6202. <sighs> we'll see if we have any more SU4211-8. There we go. Lovely. Right. See you shortly. Right, again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Um, <laughs> you'll notice I've had to move the USB stick because we have had a bit of a problem trying to get the update to them. I keep forgetting these SanDisk USB 3 sticks don't fit in the front USB slot. It looks like they are, but they don't. The pins don't make, they don't make connection anyway. You can see we've got a white light there. The USB stick in question is in the rear of the machine now. <laughs> so cannot start PS4. So let's go through, let's try and initialize this machine and see what we get. So we should very quickly get the 42118-6 error, if that is indeed still present. At the end of this please wait screen is when you'll see it. It doesn't actually ever attempt to do anything. It literally just throws the error message at you and then kicks you out. So that's two uh, machines. I've got to strip down completely to uh, get to this drive because that's two machines. Now I've got a PS4 Slim, which uh, appears on another video. Uh, which was uploaded before this one, so I'll stick the link in the description for you to that one. Um, yes, we had the same sort of thing where somebody just taking the drive apart without using the eject screw, and it's knack it's mucked up the uh, the disk feed mechanism, which is great. So that means to show you this working, I'm going to have to manually feed a disk into this thing as well, because I don't really have time to mess around taking them apart today. But as you can see there, we're initialising. Preparing to update the system software. This is all excellent. We're happy while it's doing this. We're happy while it's doing this. This this makes us happy while it's doing this. We wouldn't normally get this far if 42118-6 was still going to be a problem for us. Can't believe that's another machine I'm going to have to strip down to bugger about with though because somebody... Oh, so annoying. The trouble is, these machines come from the same lad and, and essentially he just buys them as a, as a job lot from an auction usually and of course they've all been messed around with they're all sort of like failed repair attempts and usually what will happen is sometimes you get sometimes you'll find that there's a disc inside the drive a game disc inside it or whatever you know the poor bugger whose playstation it was was last using of course there's no way of getting it back to them because you don't know whose it was because they just return pallets from from retailers um but uh you know obviously Whenever, you know, whoever buys them initially from the, you know, from the, from the retailer um, goes through and finds a, ooh, there's a game disc in that. They just take the top of the drive off and rip it out because they don't know any different to actually just manually feed the disc out, you know, with the eject screw and, you know, you won't bugger the drive up. But, uh, yeah, anyway. nice theory while it lasts so that's two drives now what oh, the pros aren't particularly awful to get apart but the uh the slims are a pain the ps4 slims if you've never worked on one they're just misery to get down to the dvd drive you see initially with the with the original fats and and even the 1200 series machines you know they, they were really easy to get into get apart you know so if you had a disk drive out of that or well, the fact you just had to take the power supply out and the screws out around the DVD drive, that was it, boom. You could have a drive out of it in about 30 seconds. Um, with the Slims, you have to dismantle the machine in its entirety. You have to take the all the 30-odd screws out of the top, you have to take the power supply out of the opposite side, you have to take all the case plastic off, you have to take, the, uh, you know, we've gone through the power supply, you have to take all the uh, mainboard shielding out, the ground, the actual bottom base plate for the motherboard out to get to the DVD drive, it's a joke. Considering that's the bit that's probably most likely to fail, um, 
I, I, I just don't know what they were thinking. I mean, even from Sony's perspective, you know, they've got a warranty service, these machines. If they keep getting them back for, you know, oh, laser's gone. Like, I mean, I suppose the laser's probably classed as a consumable, so, you know, they probably charge you for it. But either so they probably don't care, actually. But even so, you'd imagine that they'd want to make it as easy as possible for their uh, pound of flesh that they charge you for replacing them, so... Or it just seems a bit daft, you know, a little bit of a waste of our time and a waste of theirs. Maybe they don't give it. Maybe they just, you know, their service centre don't really care because, like I say, you know, they're getting paid handsomely for it. Um, whereas towards independence, it's a bit of a pain in the backside, so we're less likely to do it. <laughs> more fool them. It takes more than that to put us off. But it is a real pain, especially when you, you know, you consider what the say that you know it's supposed to be progress yeah they're supposed to make these designs more and more efficient well they haven't in this instance the slim is awful the pro is not bad the pros are all right it could be better but it's not bad but the slims are just the slims are misery the slims are misery whereas in comparison the xbox ones are actually all right the slims are Easy enough to take apart. Go, you know. In fact, the slimmers are sorry. The uh, the one S is actually probably better than the one X, in my opinion. Slightly better design. The one X is a little bit can be a little bit fiddly, um, but the one S the one S is is great. It's a little bit weird trying to put the front back on. Um, <laughs> the manner in which you uh, you mount the uh, the top white plastic casing back to the chassis is a little bit odd. Um, it seems a bit counterintuitive. You kind of have to slide the front up and on, and then you lift it up. And then as you lift it up, the, the front, the, the chassis drops in. So it always, it, it's really strange. Unless you've done it, it's kind of weird. It's the sort of thing that if you didn't know how to do it that way, you'd swear you were going to break it if you did it that way, so you wouldn't do it. <laughs> In fact, it's the correct way of doing it. It's bizarre. But yeah, you know, I like the One S. The One S repairability is pretty cool. Um, the One X is alright as well, but it's a little bit more fiddly than the S. Um, but both in comparison to, to the PS4, Slim and Pro is, is night and day, really. Microsoft actually thought about it. Sony just didn't. Well, they certainly didn't think with the Slim. I'll let him off with a pro. But anyway, so we're just running through this now. You can see we've got our OS installed. No 42118-6 errors anymore. Uh, yeah, date and time is wrong, as usual. Well, the time's wrong. The date's great. But <laughs> anyway, 10th of May, 2019. As you can see, user 1. Excellent, I'm moving to the dashboard. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to get a game disc if we can. See if we can feed it. Okay, it certainly sounds a lot happier than it was before. We have the disc read icon there in the top right corner. And there we go, game tile is up. Game title is up. FIFA 18 takes ages to install. I don't know what the hell it does. But, um, <laughs> yeah, if we, we, I mean, seriously, it takes about 15, 20 minutes to uh, to install, in my experience. So we won't sit and watch it. We'll wrap this up while it's doing it. But as you can see there, um, you know, the DVD drive is now working perfectly fine. Or the Blu-ray drive, even. And uh, it's good to go. Okay, so what have we done there today, then? So we've taken a look at this particular PS4 with the 42118-6 error message. That is to say that the console cannot communicate with the Venisas controller IC. And at update time, it will fail instantaneously. And it won't go any further than 0%. So literally, as soon as it tries to update, it'll fall over. In the instance where you've actually got a new disk, so... You know, if you've got a an upgraded hard drive, if you've tried to swap that out for whatever reason, as soon as it goes to actually begin to initialize, it won't even get that far. It literally, as soon as you go to install the update after the little please wait uh, screen in safe mode, it'll fall straight to the 42118-6 
uh, display and you won't get any further than that. So in order to resolve that, what we did is we took the motherboard out of the console and we took a look and there was two fuses. F6202, which of course is a common culprit for this cause um, in the PS4 Slim, and F6201, which was directly beneath it. Now, in our case, F6201 and F6202 were both blown. F6201 actually had a hole in the middle of it, um, which wasn't too clever. So something has gone uh, bang in a big way there. Um, so we replaced both those mainboard fuses, and when we reassembled it, of course, um, with that enabled the machine to talk to the Renesas controller, so the MediaCon could establish connection to the um, to the Renesas controller, and from that point forward, obviously, everything's happy. It knows that the so-called drive board, of course, it doesn't have one. It's, in, it's integrated into the main board these days. But system architecture, as far as it's concerned, needs to know that that drive controller, that Renesas controller I see, is matched to the rest of the other system components. Uh, by replacing those two fuses and allowing that communication, we allow the PS4 to actually talk and to um, confirm that that is indeed the case, and then the system software update went through. Now, we still had a slight issue with our DV with our Blu-ray drive feed, of course, because somebody had just ripped the top of the drive off and ripped a disc out rather than actually going through properly and uh, feeding the... Uh, the game out or was this the one was that the other one somebody had used the screw on this one but either way they did still somehow managed to bugger it up i presume rather than being careful with the screwdriver they've either used an electric one and zipped it in and out and buggered it or for shits and giggles they decided that you know it's too much like hard work and they'll just take the top off anyway but either way they they made a mess of it so <laughs> we've had to take it apart and realign all the mechanism and rebuild the drive and as you can see now that's all working perfectly fine so um yeah it's been a bit of a trial but uh, we've got there in the end so if you have a PS4 Pro and you are experiencing the same 42118-6 uh, error message when you're trying to upgrade your PlayStation and your disk drive is no longer working, then take a look at those two fuses, F6202 and F6201. And if they're blown, you want to replace those, of course. Now, the one that we are using is a fast blow 1 amp. I think it's rated at 32 volts, I believe, um, if I remember rightly. The actual packet themselves are, are down there in the, in the box. Um, I will put a link to the description if I can think on as to where you can buy some of these. Um, and like I say, if you've got this particular issue, then you can replace those fuses. Likewise, if you've got a faulty PS4 Pro mainboard or even a you know a, a, a drive board from an earlier um, PS4, you could probably take those fuses. Um, from there, they should work absolutely fine. So in the end, we got there, we replaced the fuses, tested it, and as you can see now, all is working okay, and we're installing FIFA on our PlayStation. So what I will say, ladies and gentlemen, is thank you very much for watching. Um, if you found this useful, then please remember to comment, rate, like, and subscribe. So, you know, putting a, a like on the video if it's been useful or you've, if you've enjoyed it, uh, proves immensely valuable to me it helps the channel grow essentially youtube's fancy algorithms of the mythical dragons that work away in the background essentially work out that the more likes that this video receives and from the more people it receives it from the more people it gets suggested to which ultimately means more people watch it and therefore enables the channel to grow so just by doing that one little thing for me will help me immensely and i would thank you very much for doing that uh, likewise um if this is the first video you stumbled upon um we've not been uploading much content recently but that's because um, of a few personal issues going on um but i am still here and i will still upload content and hopefully over the next few weeks we'll have a, a slightly steadier stream of, of stuff to come through so all being well we'll, we'll be able to do that um, so if you are interested in this sort of stuff this channel is full we've got over 100 videos it's full of stuff like this ps4 xbox component level repair diagnosis um, and going into the ins and outs and details to exactly what's going on and where and why so uh, if that's your kind of thing then uh, feel free to hit that subscribe button and ting that little bell next door to be notified as and when we upload new content so thank you very much and it suffices it to say that this fifa 18 installation isn't going to finish before we finish this video uh, no i'm doing bad though it's going about halfway through but um yes so for now at least ladies and gentlemen i'm gonna bid you farewell 
I want to say thank you very much for watching. You've been great, as always. Yeah, so from me, from the PlayStation, and from those two crappy little fuses, it's a uh, good night for me. I'll see you on the next vid in the not-too-distant future. And for me, it's bye-bye uh, for now. Many thanks for watching then, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, then why not check out these recommendations below. Also, please remember to comment, rate, and, of course, subscribe to the channel if you found this useful. We've plenty more content on there, and there's lots more to come.